I'm Sheila Anderson, host of Weekend Jazz Overnight, Salon Sessions, and the Sunday Night Music Mix on Members Port at WBGO Newark. And I'm proud to say we are now 54 Wayne Shorter Way in Newark, New Jersey. But we're here from the Yamaha Studios in New York as we're about to listen to some incredible, incredible music from emerging artists of the Next Jazz Legacy program. So don't go anywhere, and we'll see you on the other side. Thank you. 
I'm Sheila Anderson, and joining me right now is a very, very, very special guest, NEA Jazz Master. You are also the Artistic Director of Berkeley Institute of Jazz and Gender, Gender Justice. Justice. It's a mouthful. <laughs> it's all a mouthful. Terry Lynn Carrington, you're also being honored at WBG from WBGO from our fundraiser as we are honoring women of influence, of which you are one. I'd like to ask you to explain what the project is. The, the project, it's inaugural the project, that you have started called The Next Jazz Legacy. Please tell us about it and also what we heard from these incredible emerging artists. All right. Well, first of all, good to be here with you, Sheila. And uh, this program is something I concocted uh, along with Vanessa Reed from New Music USA. And we talked about this for over a year. Um, I thought, what is a great way to kickstart some careers for women and non-binary artists. And I thought about my own career and I thought apprenticeship is uh, really key to my success. The people that I played with, the people that gave me a shot on their stage, it taught me along the way. And apprenticeship more than just mentorship because mentorship you can do off stage, but apprenticeship is on stage. And I think that's really important to play with people that are better than you and um, you know people that you look up to and that can take your playing to the next level. So that was the idea behind this program. And we had 86 applicants and had to boil it down to seven this inaugural, inaugural year. And um, it's, it's been really a journey and an amazing one because uh, these uh, women and non-binary artists really get to um, discover some new things and get some support along the way. Uh, so we've heard a couple of songs already. The first one was written by our drummer, Ivana Cuesta, and that was called Mosaic. And I'm like, wait a minute, don't I have an album <laughs> with that title in there? <laughs> <You do. laughs> uh, and uh, I've known Ivana for a while, and um, she was actually one of 
the reasons I wanted to start this program. I, I thought somebody like Ivana really, you know, just needs this extra boost. Uh, and also playing on this song was Anastasia Petrova on piano, um, Loke Riesberg on guitar, and Kalia Vandiver on trombone. Uh, and joining us was Tyrone Allen on bass. He's not in the program. Uh, and it wasn't conceived for them to be a band to play together. Uh, so there's not a bass player. Um, but there are two piano players and two guitarists. Uh, it was really conceived just to focus on each of them individually, but we have these opportunities sometimes to play together, which is great. The second song was Soft, written by Kalia Vandiver, and um, it was the same band except the pianist Switch, and we had Alexis Lombre on piano. And the program is a collaboration between New Music USA and the Berkeley Institute of Jazz and Gender Justice, and is funded by the Mellon Foundation. That's awesome. When what is it? Uh, what are the uh, what's the criteria for um, who, who who can apply for this, this um, program? Well, I think you know we've tried to define what we feel is emerging, what an emerging artist career would look like. So somebody that's out of college or out of that age range, and under 32 or 35, I can't even remember this moment, the exact age, but somewhere in the first 10 years of their career. Uh, and they just had to apply. We asked some questions. They had to you know, write uh, or do a video or write an essay and um, just submit their playing and their co compositions. And um, Yeah, we had a lot of uh, people on panels that were helping uh, to to choose the finalists and once we got down to 20 there was three different panels that chose the finalists and once we got down to 20 there was another panel uh, that, that chose the actual awardees. <laughs> Smile, even though it's breaking. When there are clouds in the sky, you'll get by. If you smile through your fear and sorrow, smile.
When there are clouds in the sky, you'll get by. If you smile through your fear and sorrow, smile was a use of crying. You find the line is still worth
Corey Lynn Carrington, can you please tell us about the two songs that we just heard? Uh, we heard Smile, written by Charlie Chaplin. And um, I want to also make the point that uh, gender justice is not just the work of women. You know, it's the work of men, too. So as we celebrate uh, women and we also um, you know, look toward shifting the narrative and, uh, you know, really transforming the culture, um, men have to be right there involved with us in doing that work. Um, and Lexi sang that, Lexi Hamner sang Smile, and um, it also featured Alexis on piano and Kiana on guitar, and Ivana on drums, and Tyrone Allen on bass. Then after that, we heard Lost, which was an original by Anastasia on piano, and I think the band was the same. You're listening to the emerging artists of the Next Jazz Legacy. Program. Program. <laughs> Program. I know, you I know, know. It's, it's funny because I, for a long time, couldn't figure out what we were going to call them either. You okay. know, awardees, uh, emerging artists. I mean, it, it's a program that, uh, you know, everybody's professional. They're not students anymore. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a program for emerging artists. But they did win a financial award, a monetary award. Uh, so, technically, I guess they're awardees, too. Yes, and uh, Terry Lynn Carrington is, is my guest. My question also is, is this is this, is this a year-long project? Is it a three-year or there, mm -hmm. or a length of time that the mentorship, or is basically once you have a mentor, you have a mentor, mentor for life, exactly. I, I would guess, right? That's the idea. Mm -hmm. The relationships that they make, uh, they'll carry it with them for life, hopefully. Uh, or that they will have affected their life in some way. Um, and each uh, group will have a year with the program, and we're funded right now for three years, and I'm hopeful that we'll be able to continue after these first three years. Now, I noticed uh, when I was reading over the program, um, they're given two mentors, or uh, um, I, I, I saw two, two names mm -hmm. listed. Can you explain? Yeah. Well, they're given an apprenticeship with one artist, so uh, they'll be doing at least a half a dozen shows in the year's time with whoever that artist is. And then they're also having an apprenticeship, a cre I mean, I'm sorry, a creative mentorship with uh, another artist. And that could be in person or on Zoom, and it just connects them with somebody else that's... Uh, you know, more of a creative mentor opposed to a, an onstage apprenticeship. Do you assign them or do they choose them? Or a little bit of both. Yeah. A little bit of both. Um, on the application, they, they're they able to uh, list three people. I mean, maybe we'll make it even more next next time. But they list three people that they would like to have their apprenticeship with. And um, generally, I'll try to make that happen but sometimes I might look at it and think well maybe not that person or I might look at it and say this person really could use this person or you know what I mean so it, it's a little bit of um, just knowledge about the musicians and the industry and a little bit of knowledge about uh, the applicants too right I have a personal question mm -hmm. um, you started playing drums I, th I believe at three or you're three or four no you actually seven seven did the drums choose you or did you choose the drums I understand you had your grandfather's drum kit or, mm -hmm. I mean what, what was it you were born into a musical family so I'm just curious did the drums choose you or did you choose the drums I don't know I think that there's a little bit of both uh, I think everything's in divine order um, or I, I really feel like the universe unfolds as it should. So uh, I, I think maybe even at that age, I was in tune a little bit with rolling with, you know, what, what, whatever seemed right at the moment. Uh, so I played saxophone first at five, and I lost my first set of teeth. And, oh. <laughs> and then I asked my dad if I could play drums, and he, he played drums and saxophone. But, you know, I was very fortunate because my dad knew everybody in jazz. When I say everybody, literally everybody. And when they would come through Boston, I would uh, go hear them or sit in with them. So I was playing with, you know, Clark Terry and Dizzy Gillespie and 
Oscar Peterson and a lot of people when when I was before I was a teenager. Uh, so that kind of access to uh, these musicians and, and to the jazz stage, literally and figuratively, you know, he gave me access. So I'm really grateful for my dad and for that situation growing up because I realized that a lot of young musicians, especially young women, uh, don't have that kind of access. And so that's part of what we're trying to help uh, provide more access. Well, we're going to close out with you performing with some of the artists. And can you tell us what we're going to hear and and uh, which, which artists you're going to be uh, performing with? And then if you could just tell us again the name of the seven um, awardees from the project. First, we'll play Lift Every Voice and Sing, which is, uh, it used to be called the Negro uh, National Anthem. Yes. <laughs> uh, and I arranged it for uh, the NEA Jazz Masters program the year before I became a jazz master, and I was the MD that year. And I arranged it, and Dee Dee Bridgewater and Lisa Fisher sang it. It was the closing uh, song for the show. And uh, I hope to record it, actually, on maybe my next record. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I think trying to... I, I always felt the quintessential arrangement of that song was by B.B. Winans, so I, I shied away from it for a long time, but I think I like it, so hopefully we'll record that. And then after that, um, we'll play an original of mine called Samsara, and that was written for Wayne Shorter. And featured on Samsara is uh, Loki Reesberg on guitar, uh, Kalia Vandiver on trombone, um, Anastasia Petrova on piano, and Tyrone Allen on bass. And featured on Lift Every Voice is Alexis Lombre on piano, Kiana Hutchinson on uh, guitar, and Lexi Hamner singing and playing trombone.
Well, it's been great having you here and hearing these emerging artists. Terry Lynn Carrington, thank you so much for all that you do 
for for this music and and I'm just in awe of you and and your success. Yeah, Thank thanks. you again. Thank you for sure. being here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having me.